Good morning, everybody. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm from Shannon Fabrics, and I'm the National Educator. And today, we're doing our first episode of Sew Together Tuesdays. We're going to be doing this all summer. And each week, we'll get together and we'll talk about different projects and uh, tips that deal with working with Cuddle Minky. I'm really excited to do this with you guys. I think it's going to be really fun, and I hope you're going to uh, enjoy the projects as we go along. Today, we're going to start with seven tips for working with Cuddle Minky. Okay. So one of the things that people really struggle with when they're working with Cuddle and with Minky in general is that it's a shifty kind of fabric and it's because it's a knit fabric. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to cut it. Okay, so what I want you to do is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lay it out nice and flat. When you're dealing with a large piece, you might want to lay it out on the floor or lay it out on a dining room table. Okay, here we're just going to lay it out on my cutting mat. I have a smaller piece here to help you to see it better because large piece we obviously can't fit. Okay, so the first thing I do is that I use either a big pen, just a regular old ballpoint pen, or I use a Sharpie. Okay, today I'll use the Sharpie so that you can see it better, but normally I'll you just use a regular ballpoint pen because it's a smaller line. Okay, and I just use my ruler. If you've done this before and you've tried to cut out a big square, you'll often notice that it gets sort of off kilter and can end up a little bit more like a rhomboid or a parallelogram. So I'm going to use this first. So what I can do is I make my first line, then I'm going to come back here and line it up, and I'm going to come right down the side and remark it. I'm going to do that in, around my entire thing so that I can see exactly what I'm cutting and how square it actually is so it can't move too much on me. This ruler is one I really like that's a quilter select that has some stuff on the back that makes it so it can't really slide which makes it really easy. If you don't have this, you don't have Quilter Select, if you have another brand, this is a product that I really like that's called Grippy that you can spray on the back of it and it makes your ruler so it doesn't slide around so much, which is really, really helpful when you're working with this fabric, okay? So once we've got it cut, we need to cut it. And I use a couple of different tools depending on what I'm doing. I need my um, rotary cutter, sorry. So I use my rotary cutter, or my little Fomori scissors, or I have a little Ulfa craft knife. And it depends on which kind of fabric I'm using, that which, which tool I'll use to cut it, okay? So when I'm doing just regular cuddle fabrics, so this is a cuddle print, and this is our dimple. Okay, this is the one with the raised dots. Either of these, I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter with. Okay, and I can do it so I can just turn the fabric over. I've drawn some lines for you, so you can see. I can just use my rotary and just cut along that line. Okay, carefully follow it. Okay, or if I wanna be a little bit more careful, maybe I have a hard time getting a straight line, I can go back over and put my ruler back down again and then use my rotary cutter to cut that. Okay, super duper easy. All right, but then if I'm using something like a Lux Cuddle, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my uh, craft knife. So this is one that I use when I'm working with this. This is our Llama Cuddle and it's super thick. So when you cut this with a rotary, what happens is you cut off all of this edge and you end up with a really hard line. So these are edges that I've already cut with the, the uh, craft knife. This one has been done with a rotary and you can see it makes it nice and, um, straight there and cuts off all that edge, but it also makes more of a mess. So if I use this tool, it helps keep the mess down to a minimum. So what I do is I just mark my line. If I'm doing a straight line for a uh, strip quilt or binding, that sort of thing, I'm gonna draw my line first and I'm gonna use my blade. I'm just gonna click it out a little bit. I use a new blade every time, every project. Okay, and then I just hold a little pressure and drag it along here. And you can see it just cuts the backing and doesn't cut all the way through. So it ends up being a lot less mess, like no mess, and a nice edge to it. So I'll use this one, especially when I'm doing binding or a self-binding blanket, that sort of thing. This works really nice for that edge to keep it really soft. Now, if I'm using something, a Lux Cuddle, and I'm cutting out a small shape, so like this one is, the, is an ear for a little stuffed animal, 
This is when I use my Fomori scissors. And I really like these because they have little bitty um, micro serrated blades here that are real small, easy to use, but big handles that keep it comfortable. And I'm just gonna snip in here. And then I just stick it right underneath the very edge of the backing and clip along here. Okay, and it seems like it could take you a lot longer to do this, but honestly, the amount of mess that you don't have by doing this is great. Okay? And it does make it easier to sew together in the end. Your, your accuracy is much better doing it this way. So you can see all of this has kept these fibers. Okay. So it doesn't cut through those. But normally if I cut this with a rotary cutter, all of this would be on my table. Okay. So the mess is really, really minimal. You can see here that I've cut several different fabrics and I've got really no mess here. Um, but if you're cutting out a lot of stuff, because a mess is an issue, okay? Um, so one of the biggest things is to get rid of the mess before you start sewing it. So if you've cut a lot of fabric and you've cut an entire quilt kit out, you're gonna have a mess. And so we wanna get rid of that before we ever start sewing with it. So the biggest uh, uh, trick that we have is using a washcloth and your dryer, okay? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a wet washcloth I have one here, you're just gonna take a wet washcloth, wipe down your board, get all of your fabric strips, your pieces, whatever it is that you're cutting out, you're gonna take it with your wet washcloth and you're gonna throw it into the dryer, okay? Let it tumble around for a few minutes, about 10 minutes on low or no heat, and it will knock off all of that cuddle dust into your lint trap, which is great. I like to do it so that I check the dryer every few minutes, take out whatever lint is in the lint trap and just keep doing it until it stops dropping off cuddle dust. If you don't have a dryer in your home, and you're um, like me and I live in an apartment without a dryer, I will just use um, my, my handheld vacuum. So I have like a little Black & Decker handheld, and I use that to vacuum off the strips, and then I take it outside and give it a good shake. That works just as well, but you do wanna make sure that you're getting rid of all of the mess before you take it to your machine, because you don't wanna get all that fuzz into your bobbin case or anything like that, okay? So once we've got rid of the mess, then we can start sewing, okay? So there's tip four, is that you're gonna use the double pinning to keep it nice and stable while you're sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you with a couple pieces of Lux Cuddle that I've got. Okay, so this is actually our um, Cuddle Ridge here on the top. So this is really nice fluffy stuff. We're gonna pin these together as if we were gonna make a little blanket. So if you were making a throw or doing a cuddle strip quilt, any of that, you're gonna to wanna to pin this like, like I'm showing you. And the reason we do this is because if you pin perpendicular to the fabric, it tends to still wanna move in between. So we figured out a way of keeping it nice and stable. And the way that I do this is I start in the center. So this is just a tiny piece to give you an example, but it would be the same whether you were using a large throw or a small bit here. So we're gonna start in the middle and we're gonna pin these. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin the outside edges. Okay, and these are my clover pins, which I like a lot. They're really nice and strong. And I'll go through all the layers without bending, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna come along here and anytime that my fabric works up a little bit, you can see it's worked itself further than the bottom fabric, I just give it a tug back, pinch it in place, and pin it. Okay, we wanna keep it where we want it to be, so that means you kinda gotta move the fabric sometimes. So I'm gonna pin this row first. So this is, this is holding down that whole edge. Now if I start sewing here, I'm gonna take out these pins and then it still has a lot of freedom of movement, which we don't want. So I go ahead and I pin it a second row and that's what the double pinning is. So I pin it again, right down here, to hold all of this in place. Teresa, mm -hmm. question, would wonder clips work as well? Wonder clips do not work as well because they don't hold it um, very tight. So what I have done when I'm doing like a large throw is that I'll use wonder clips along this top. So instead of using this first row of pins, I can use the wonder clips here because the trick really is this second row. So if you're dealing with really squirrely fabrics, having the two rows of pins will keep it much more in check, but you can use the Wonder Clips for that first row on things, especially if they're the same kind of fabric together. So if you're using two of the Lux Cuddle Ridges together, for example, they wouldn't shimmy quite as much. Um, and I'll use those Wonder Clips along the top. So yeah.
totally works. Okay, so once we've gotten it pinned, it's nice and stable. It can't move because once we've taken these out, this second row of pins holds the fabric in place pretty well. Then I'll take all of these out when I'm done sewing it. Okay, so the next thing, so before we start sewing it, we're gonna need to lengthen our stitch. So I just use, um, use a straight stitch is what we recommend with a polyester thread. And the biggest thing is that you need to up your stitch. Most patchwork quilters are used to using like a two millimeter stitch length or sometimes less depending on what you're doing. So it can be a very tiny stitch and we don't want that small of a stitch when we're working with cuddle. So we up it. Uh, so I always start with at least a three, a three and a half. Um, sometimes we up it up to a four. It depends on how your machine is working with it. We just want to make sure that we're getting a nice long stitch. One, you don't want to have to take it out if you don't have to. And it's just, it's kind of a pain, truthfully, to take it out. So we want to make it a nice long stitch so that if we have to take it out, it's easier and it's easier to see what we're doing. So this is about the stitch length that we want to have. Okay, so this one, I've used it on my baby lock, and this was a three stitch length. Can you see that okay? Okay, so you can see it's a nice, clear stitch, easy to see, and it would be easy to take out if I really had to. Okay, so we wanna make sure that your stitches are looking like this. If they're not, you need to up your stitch length, and the other thing that you can do is that you can open up the presser foot pressure on your machine. And most machines will have a way of doing it. So you either need to pull out your manual, check it out, see what it is. Sometimes it's in the settings. Sometimes it's a manual switch on the side. Sometimes it's one that's on the top. Okay, but make sure you find out where that is. And if it's not feeding through very well, that's a good place to start is to open up that pressure. Okay, so tip number six is to use a 90-14 stretch needle. Okay, this one is our 9014. This is from Schmetz. I really uh, like this one a lot. They're, they're very, they're just good needles. The reason we want to use a stretch needle is because it's a knit fabric. When we're using knit fabric, we're sewing knit fabrics for apparel, we always wanna make sure that you're using a stretch needle so it doesn't make holes in your fabric. And that isn't so much the problem when you're working with cuddle, but it will skip stitches. So if you're using a stretch needle, you won't have skip stitches. And the, um, the thing that makes it different is that this end is kind of rounded. It's not quite as sharp as a universal. And the scarf where the, fabric, or the thread goes through is actually a little bit larger in it. For somehow makes it work through the knit fabric so much better. So I definitely recommend that. We recommend a 9014 because uh, it's a little bit thicker needle and will get through more fabric. If you're sewing with heavier, heavier cuddles or more layers, especially if you're using like a thicker batting, you might want to up it again. But generally speaking, the 9014 has worked great for everything for me. Okay, so tip number seven is to use a walking foot. If you haven't bought a walking foot for your machine yet, I definitely recommend that you do. They're great, great addition. And they're generally, they come with a lot of machines now, but if you don't have one, get it. You'll use it for a lot more than just working with the cuddle fabrics, okay? So a walking foot, let me show you how that works. Okay, so are we on there? Can you see it? Okay, so this is, this is my walking foot. This is for my Bernina. So this little part is really critical with what you're doing because this little guy has to go over this screw. So a lot of times if it's not working right, that's where your problem is, is that it's not up over the screw. Okay, so you wanna make sure that that's up in there and then you're just gonna lock it in place. Okay, and then the way that it works is it's gonna come along and it's gonna drop down, but it's gonna lift up and you can see how it lifts the whole foot up as we sew and so that will actually feed the fabric through much, much better. So if you're not using walking foot, make sure that you've got it, okay? So let's go over all seven tips one more time, all right? Okay, so first you're gonna mark it before you cut it. Use a ballpoint or a Sharpie pen for that. Second, you're gonna cut it with the right tool, depending on if it's a low nap fabric, you're gonna use a rotary cutter. A longer nap, you're gonna use the blade or a small scissors. Third, you get rid of the mess before you sew it. Throw it in the dryer with a wet washcloth, it's very important. Let it tumble around on low or no heat and, jump and get rid of all of that dust, okay? Tip number four is use double pinning to keep it nice and stable as you sew. Five, make sure to lengthen your stitch to at least a three, three and a half, and lower the presser foot pressure. Tip number six, use a 90-14 stretch needle. And number seven, always use a walking foot. So join us next week 
We're gonna sew a super simple and super cute little cuddle blanket. You can sign up for our newsletter at shannonfabrics.com and you'll get the inside scoop on what's coming up next for Sew Together Tuesdays, where you need to buy your products and updates on what we'll be doing. So thank you to all of our vendor partners for all that they do to make great products that make sewing with Cuddle Minky easy. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again next Tuesday. Until then, happy sewing.